the first thing I'm always looking for is a nice location. And Lucy's looking pretty good in this location. The trench coat got the earthy tones here. And then we got the nice, you know, the greenery in the background. I like the leading lines that I got here. But now after you find a nice location, you got to find good lighting. So this is a little hack for finding good lighting. What I'll do is put my eye in the viewfinder and kind of have her face me and just walk around me and I could see how the light is hitting her face. So I could tell you right now, since we got some really harsh lighting, harsh sunlight, it would look good, completely backlit. And then I'll just like underexpose her face just a tad. And then this angle I like as well, because even although it's harsh lighting, it's coming from above. So we got the nice shadows coming under her chin. And as long as I have her pose with her chin slightly high, it, it would actually look pretty flattering. I'm getting a shadow of her right there behind her and I could always use that in my composition as well. See, I'm getting her shadow right here. Good. In Luminar AI, I'm gonna be using the featured face template for this image. If you didn't know, these templates are not just color filters. They actually make other changes to the image. And I love how it automatically retouched the skin, added some light to her face, and recovered some of the shadows in the trees behind her. I wanna give this image more of a fall look by changing the hues of the greens, but first I have to mask her out using the eraser tool so she is not affected. And by dropping the greens and the yellow hues, and then by increasing both the saturation and luminance of the green, that's gonna give me those orangey leaves that I want. In Face AI, I try to bring out some detail in her eye by increasing the whites and adding some light using the iris sliders. In Skin AI, this template already did some skin smoothing, but I'm gonna go ahead and increase that slightly and also use Shine Remove. I really like it because it blends in the different tones of the skin. I also created a local mask just to add some light to her eyes. And I feel like this image is in a good place now. Now that we got some shade, um, I saw just in this one area, I turned to the side and what I saw was the trees and those leading lines, right? It's, it's, it's leading that direction. So I got some nice leading lines here. And it's actually good that we don't have the sun out. The sun would create a lot of like that side light. It's not very nice. Give me a couple different looks, maybe lean back a little bit. Make sure your chin is up. Making sure she's in the center. Got those leading lines, the trees on each side. Like that, raise your chin up a bit. All right, so I, I came here because I wanted fall colors straight out of camera. Found a nice little orange tree. But now, when you find the location, how do you find the right lighting for it? In my viewfinder, I'm gonna see where the light looks best on her face. Follow me. So clearly, yeah, the light's coming from that side. I already knew that. Um, the light is gonna look better with her either facing away or facing toward the light. I'm gonna fill her face with light here, so I'm gonna shoot this direction. One of my rules is you don't want like a tree branch or like a pole to be coming out of someone's head. But here she's covering the entire tree, you know, so the leaves are gonna be at her head. So I don't gotta worry about that. All right, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna use some of the leaves here to kind of use as a foreground and kind of frame her up here. Ooh, now we got nobody. Checking out the scenery collection, I was really feeling the pleasing touch template. See what I did there? Really like those muted greens that I'm getting here. Now I went straight to face AI and I boosted the light on her face a bit. I also increased the iris sliders and eye whitening to really bring out her eyes on this one. So I increased the amount of skin smoothing and shine removal, not that I really needed it. And I also used the erase tool to remove the two small blemishes that I seen on her skin. I wanna fill the frame more with the colors here, with the grass and the with all these brushes here. So at 200 millimeter, I'm able to do that. You're shooting at 200 now, I bring in the background. See, instead of all of that, all the buildings and stuff, I compress everything in. 
Ooh, I really like these. All right, for this one, I got leading lines. I got color. It's all coming together, shooting at 200 millimeter. Oh, do that again, please. Before we retouch this photo, did you hear about Luminar's new software? It's called Luminar Neo, and it was announced recently, and I'm very interested in it because it has this feature called Portrait Background Removal AI. I personally love the idea of creating composite photos, except I don't like the, the idea of actually doing it manually. It's just, it's very intimidating. So Luminar claims that Luminar Neo is going to do all of that, that whole process in just one click. And using some of the new tools like Mask AI and Relight AI, it's gonna make your composite look realistic. I will hopefully be testing this out very, very soon. Using the Easy Portraits collection, I fell in love with Fade right away. I like the muted tones of this one. I went straight to Face AI. I added a little bit more light to her face. And of course, I'm doing the, the same thing that I do for most of my images. I'm gonna increase the eye whitening, enhance the eyes a little bit more. Like all my other images, I'm gonna go into Skin AI and increase the amount of skin smoothing and shine removal. Now, honestly, I'm in love with this image. I love the colors. It's just that person in the background. They got to go. Get them out of here, coach. Just like any other clone stamp, I sampled the stairs and then simply just brushed it over the person. Now, personally, I'm in a really happy place with this image and I'm going to use Boca AI again, though, because I, I just like that separation, that 3D look. And even though I'm shooting with an f2.8 lens, there's no harm in doing a little bit more. And the beautiful thing about this is if you're ever using like an F4 lens, you can get the look of an F2.8 or even a prime lens. Look down again. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right. I think we're good here. <laughs> 